This episode covers days six, seven and eight of our tour as we travelled from the hotel west of Barcelona to the Parador in Alcaniz and then onto the historic city of Cuenca for two nights. This is your bedroom report. So we've got the entrance here, leading through to a triple room. Wardrobe, etc. There's a little fridge on the floor and obviously somewhere to work if you want to. And we've got the TV screen here, window to the outside. Not particularly attractive from our room, but I'm sure it can be from some. This is a shower room, very modern. And one of my pet gripes has been handled well in here. It's actually got some lights, so you can see what's going on. And uh, we've got a nice strip around the mirror, so you can actually have a good shave in the morning, unlike me. Right, that's the bedroom tour. See you later on. Right, we're just saddling up for the uh, next day. Day six, this is. Super rats to Alcaniz and the Parador in Alcaniz. So, same crew with me today. It's uh, Michael Lucas on his uh, Panagali behind me. Rob De Cruz, Wayne Morris, and Brian Welsh. So the distance is 363 kilometres, it's about 220, 230 miles I believe. But I think the route has got plenty of twisties on. That's the way I planned it anyway. Another lovely morning, it's already 25 degrees at 9.03 in the morning. We're pulling in here so Michael can top up the uh, first wagon prepare to start your engines You're all right for your fuel, aren't you? I've got 120 range on mine at the moment. I think it's a pretty straight run along this road for quite a while. So we're now on the N240 and it's, uh, as the sign says, we're going towards Lieda. Lovely clear morning here in Spain, viewers. We're up to 25, 26 uh, centigrade now. And the beginnings of our wigglies. Look at the view down across the valley here, that must be Lieda in front of us, I'm guessing. Mountains beyond. Super! So we've just uh, joined the T700, the T700, and as you can see we're heading up into the hills now and it's getting a little bit more wiggly. Let me show you a little bit of this road here, give you a flavour of what it's about. So as you can see it's not a major road, it's a country, two lane road, pretty good surface. The smell of pine here as we head further up the, I think it's not the T, yeah T700 we're on here. We've been up a whole host of uh, hairpins to this uh, 
summit. Right viewers, I think I'll come back to you in a while when we hit the uh, hit the top. Just had a little fuel stop and a refreshment break. We came across this fuel station just along this wiggly road. The what was what was I talking about? The 700. It's quite warm and keeping ourselves hydrated is quite important at the moment. 263 kilometres. A few of our colleagues, compatriots, have ridden past. I'd film a little bit on the T704. Spectacular gorge here. Just put the camera on to capture some of this view off to our left here. remember which valley we're overlooking here but this exhaust does uh, pop and fart when it's warm on the overrun so this is a few minutes later and we're still winding our way down there's hairpin after hairpin down the side, we're going to lose that sort of 800 metres down to the valley floor by the looks of it. Starting to open up a bit. But up there is one hairpin after another. So we've just turned on to the TP7402. This is the Col de Porrera, P O R R E R. Oh, I think. If it's not that, I'll put it up on screen. More bends. This is nicely uh, tarmacked up here. A bit broader than the last road we were on, so it's uh, a bit more flowing. But it's still got some tight ones in here. So here, viewers, we're on the T740 and it's quite windy as you can see. 208 kilometres to our destination. That's the target. So we've done quite a fair bit so far. Does it? Sorry, Wayne's talking to me in my ear, cyclist. Car coming down. Stop here, there's a tractor coming down. Stop that again, shall we? This is a second gear road, isn't it, this one? Anyway, viewers, I think you get the idea. I think I can turn these cameras off for a while. We've just had a forced stop, really, because it's so hot. I've been trying to find a bit, bit of shade. It's 33 degrees, but trying to find a bit of shade for the last few miles, but unable to. In the end, I just gave in, and we all pulled over on the side of the road and had, had a little snackette and some water and I'm just cruising because I just wanted to keep some air moving this mesh jacket is mesh but it's not that meshy to be fair so I thought I'd take the opportunity just to do a bit of uh, slow riding filmage to see a bit more of the area this is baking hot today okay you've probably seen enough so I'll catch up with you a bit later on 
If I didn't mention it, this is the T731. So shortly after my last report, viewers, uh, we're now, we've taken a uh, left turn, at the roundabout, onto the C12, uh, and we're heading south, 171 kilometres. Welcome back, we're now on the T324. If you're not familiar with these paradors that we talk about, they are usually older buildings, but perhaps rather let them just uh, fall over through neglect. Uh, the government did a whole load of them up years and years ago, but they're, I think they're mostly privately owned now, or they're in groups. So they make really interesting locations to stay, as you will see, as I've booked several paradors. And this one is like a massive fort on the high point in the uh, town of Alconies. Look it up. Up here, onto the D301 next. Now we've negotiated that. must be a bank holiday or something. It's a Tuesday today, but we haven't found a single cafe open, so I don't know what's going on. So, welcome back. We're on the T301, and this is the Col de Somme. I think it was just S-O-M. Somme. Flipping wiggly again. I just thought I'd show you this little bit of road in case you were thinking of coming this way. If you like the bendies, it's worth doing. Well, we're somewhere further up that river. That is a wide river. I'll work out the town and I'll put a I'll put a name up on the screen. So we have to go past this, come back and then go. Yeah. And then it's gonna take us up and over that bridge, I think. Left at the traffic lights, take the first left. I've got 37 degrees on my dash. Welcome back, we're on the N230B. And as you can see, it's quite a fast, uh, sweepy road through the mountains here, as we have 95 kilometres to our destination. There are mountains up here. Great road though. This is the T330. 
I think it's a continuation of where we were when we uh, did our last uh, cut the edit. They've been doing a lot of new roads up through here anyway. The new road surfaces, it's fantastic. Just a few cars, casual lorry, that's it. Welcome back. We're now on the N232, 30 kilometres from our objective. What a lovely day. We've had some great roads to ride today. So we're uh, two and a half kilometres from the hotel, the Parador. I thought I'd show you the approach. Never been here before. I believe what we're going to is up on the uh, hillside. You'll probably see it more clearly as we get around here. Oh, is that closed? We have to go and have a look. Got nothing to lose, have we? Well, it's all right so far. No, we can't go that way. So I think I know, we've got to basically go over this roundabout, up to the next roundabout and follow the loop road all the way around. Well, I think we've got to go further around. Oh, this one's, this one's saying go left here, so that's what I'll try. Unless you see a Parador sign. Just keep our eyeballs open on the left, I would imagine. I think it's a bit... Oh, it says Parador further up here. It'd be fun getting out of here. <laughs> We've got to go up here. I think. Yeah, Parador up here. This should be interesting. This is going to be a nice little um, turning here. Right, okay, once you're around there, yeah. go to the right. <coughs> this is an interesting one, isn't it? Commanding view, I'd say. Well done, where do you go to? <laughs> well that was the challenging. Oh. Little shot. The view in the background. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have you in the foreground looking menacing? That's just it looks lovely. Just, doesn't look menacing, it just looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is the parallel Alcaniz. The river, something or other down there. That's the town of Alcaniz. 
let's just go up to this corner and see what else we can see up here. Went off the town. We'll catch up with you in a minute, I think. Here is the Paragor Alkenes. So in our room we have hanging space, safe, etc. etc. You get the gist. Let's do it the other way around this time. We haven't trashed the bathroom, so oh I can't do it like that because I've got no I've got my underpants on, but so I'll just put, I'll put my arm around the door and you can see it's all the usual equipment oh. in here. There's a shower and a bath in there. Double bed, uh, sorry, twin bedroom and uh, my socks on the floor big yeah yeah we've got complimentary drinks and uh, some snackettes here by the looks of it i don't know if that's organizers privileges or what what we've got outside the window look at that view uh, this is in a very prominent position obviously so there we go that's the uh, bedroom air conditioning in here as well Hope you enjoy. Well, the Parador Alcan is, that is a fabulous hotel. If you get the chance to uh, come anywhere near here, highly recommended. Food's good, room's good, what a historic building, what a view. Excellent, well recommended. I'll pick up with you a bit later on. And we're off to a two night stay in Cuenca tonight. So we've got to find our way out of the uh, town, so I'll catch up with you in a little while. Right, we made our way straight out of the hotel in a... Unusually, you would one go without having to turn around or make any alterations. So they've got a road closure on the main road that leads up to the Parador. So you have to approach it from the ring road at the moment. We've got 333 kilometres from this point on the outskirts of Alcanez. with an intended arrival time at about uh, 3 o'clock. That won't happen, of course, in the usual way, because there'll be drinks, petrol and whatever stops in between. But it's a fairly short route, it's about 205 miles, 8 miles or something like that. And uh, I routed it this way, or, or yeah, arranged it this way, so that we could get to Cuenca, as it's a two-nighter, get there, early afternoon or mid-afternoon and perhaps enjoy a bit of walk around town check out where the best bits are and then we've got all day tomorrow to explore so 
So I've got Michael and uh, the Panigale behind me. It's the usual crew. It's Wayne Morris, Michael Lucas, Brian Walsh, and Robert Cruz at the back. And we've just turned left onto the A226, and this goes on for at least 25 kilometres. Temp 2324C. It's just starting to warm up. It's going to be another 33 degree day, apparently. It's like this big reservoir up here. Leave the camera on for a second, see if there's anything of interest to, that we can actually spot. Two ninety-one kilometres to go. Just thought I'd show you some of this uh, rocky area that we've encountered here along further along that uh, road. The a226 Dramatic, huh? Looks like it's going to get more dramatic as we get in here I think we might need a lower gear than 6 Wigglies! Tunnel Last night we had a lovely meal. Oh, it was a couple of our it's Matt and John ahead of us. Anyway, straight on for another 28 kilometres. Oh, I suppose I could film them for a couple of kilometres. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? That town on the top of the cliffs there. Another lovely gorge to ride through. It's difficult to find shade, so just to slow down to enjoy that bit of shade there. Cool off. If you're coming to Spain at this sort of time, well, I think any time of year, make sure you carry water with you you may have to just stop somewhere and rehydrate there must be a petrol stop here we need a coffee and a rehydrate I think I certainly do so we just stopped back we're on 231 kilometers to our destination we just stopped in a little town back there for fuel and there's a coffee shop opposite spectacular flowing roads down here as you can see and again fantastic views we're up at uh, 1500 uh, meters here and the temperature has dropped to 21 degrees which is nice yeah some of these uh, hairpins are quite sharp even though they're fast but be ready well a fantastic view across here so we're down to 210 kilometers uh, we've just come down from over there and it's uh, more or less 1,700 metres on the top there. Snow poles all over the place. Temperature's still 21 degrees. So it's very pleasant now. Much cooler than when we started.
little petrol station and uh, coffee stop here lots of flies in there though so but coffee was very good and Zuki, Chris, Haig, Ashley they've all turned up to fill up with juice as well so we seem to be accumulating a few people along this route here now we'll catch up with you in a few miles time we've only got to do there you go 100 so 1346 meters here 182 kilometers arrival time of 330 thereabouts it won't be a pretty little village we bumped into a lady who came well she came over and had a chat with us who li lives locally and in uh, broken spanish she explained how this is the true spain not like down in the south where all the British and the Swedish and the Germans live this is the real true Spain not very rich but uh, true people it's the mighty 1600 BMW in front beautiful exhaust note on those things We're now behind uh, David and Erna on his uh, GS. We're just passing the airport here. We don't, we don't know if they're just parked up or they're breaking them here. Can't really tell. But look ahead, this is a bit of a straight road, isn't it? We're back into the windies. Saying this is this is quite quite an interesting place, isn't it? Lots of cantilevered houses here. was just saying about the flashing lights on the overhang to stop the lorries uh, touching themselves there. We wouldn't want that one touching it, would you, with all the Calagas on board? Yeah, yeah, would do. A little bit of water running down here as well through the ravine. 115 kilometres we have to go. The time is half past one. So we've still got two hours to get there. This is quite interesting. Yes, yeah, this is the A5, sorry, the A1512.
we've just turned right onto the uh, A1704. Yeah, looks like we're going to go up into the hills again. A few more bends for us to uh, deal with. Which is why I routed it this way. Still on the A1704, 91 kilometers to our target. We've had some wonderful roads today. It's a pretty easy ride from Alcaniz to Cranker. We're now on the CM2119. Winding our way down through the trees here, we must have gone into a different uh, state or county as the uh, road surfaces change colour. This is the CM2105 and it's been going on like this four kilometres. No, not four kilometres, four miles. Not four miles, a long time. 22 kilometres on here, at least, apparently. To my left now, you can see the river here. I'll have to look up what the name of it is, but I suspect that it's coming all the way down and past Cuenca, where we're going. Look at the hillsides here. I've never been to this part of uh, Spain before. Lovely. Catch up in a minute. We've just turned left onto CM2104. It's not quite as fast. It's not bad. See this forested area. There's hardly any traffic on these uh, roads, viewers. And that last one was in the 2103. Just went on for kilometres after kilometres fast and hardly a vehicle on it. So get yourselves over here and ride these roads because they are just... We haven't had a bad road yet, well other than the little excursion we've had, which you may have seen um, on day two I think it was, but the rest of it has been fantastic roads. It's all in the planning. So this is a bit uh, closer to the Parador, still on the CM2104. We've got a bit of a gorge going on here. the last five kilometers as we approach along the CM2105. I thought I'd film this as much as I can, give you an idea of the approach. This is the gorge that it's uh, sitting in, or part of the gorge it's sitting in. Very pretty, where one of the rivers runs down the side of the road here. Oh, there's your first sight of the uh, town up there on the cliffs. Let's hope it's easy to find the Paradol. I'm sure it will be, it's probably the biggest hotel in the town. What's the time? 3.45, not a bad time. It's quite an easy run from uh, Alcon is to here. Amazing place.
Well, we're sort of going round in a circle here, aren't we? I'll just turn the right on. If you see, does it look as though it's leading you up that way? Does it? All oh, right. Okay. Where's everybody else? All oh, right. Okay. Go. 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 This is where we find out it's one way. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. So you're showing it on my uh, crap nav now. that for a view and the position how about that for a position there's the walkway that takes us over to well my temperature hit 116 it's the highest did it coming up through those <laughs> so this is special here we're at the uh, Paradol in Cuenca and this is the bedroom. A lobby area here for oh, oh storage storage area. That's the lights. There we go. I'm going to see things. What have I got? Oh, drop the key. Hanging arrangement there. Twin room here. Desk and TV. Looks out into the central courtyard where there's dining tables and seating, etc. Air conditioning by the looks of it. And this is the bathroom, twin basins, bath, shower. What we got through here? Bidet and toilet through here. And again, very nicely uh, arranged. Sorry if that's flickering, it must be the lights, these LED lights or something, certainly flickering on the screen that I'm doing here. Right, that's a walk through. Oh, it must be just that, those lights in there. That's better. There we go. Thought I'd show you this, uh, this is from our room. back to the main stairs. So this is on the second floor. And then there's a central open courtyard here. Need to explore and find out where the uh, Restaurant is. This may be for us. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, maybe. So here we are at the Parador Cuenca. It's day eight and we're going to go over to the town via the walkway and explore the town up there. We have two more joining us tonight uh, in the shape of uh, Colin and Sarah Saunders. They'll probably be here about lunchtime, I guess, because they're staying about three and a half hours from this hotel. What a fantastic location, what a fantastic hotel. Looking back at the Paradol. If you don't like heights, as I don't, you're not gonna like this much. Could we have a higher guardrail, please? That's less than waist high guardrail. Uh, heights are not my thing at all. These are the famous houses cantilevered over the uh, side of the valley right here. Stunning position, isn't it? That's got to be the best hotel in the uh, town, I would have thought. Entering the main square here, 